soon after the coup, yeah. this was the central message of Mnangagwa. Zimbabwe is open for business, the economy, the economy, the economy, trying to get away from the politics of the past regime. What we've seen, of course, is a return to that authoritarian politics. And we've seen also that while especially governments like the British government uh, were supporting Mnangagwa in the early days, even the British government now has moved back. And there's now a sense that Zimbabwe is not open for business because the reforms that are required, both economic and political, are not taking place. And therefore, we're seeing a deepening of the crisis in Zimbabwe. The recent monetary policy is a symptom that they're dealing with a symptom of a problem and not the fundamental problems of productivity, the lack of employment growth. 94% of the Zimbabwe working population are in the informal sector. This is a massive change from the 1980s where the informal sector could be counted in tens of thousands. So you have now no strong formal sector structures, uh, you have low levels of pro uh, productivity, and you have livelihoods that are very precarious. People cannot plan their lives uh, for very long. What do you think needs to be done to stop, this, to stop Zimbabwe's violent meltdown? It's clear what needs to be done has, has been what has needed to be done since the early 2000s, which is widespread political and economic reform. We've heard uh, President Mnangagwa and before him Mugabe uh, trying to justify the massive human rights abuses that have taken place. And it's been going on since, as we know, since Gugurahunde mm -hmm. in the mid-1980s. Um, the violence of August uh, the 1st last year, nothing has been done about that. The Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission were unequivocal that this was massive violence, Amnesty International as well. It's clear that the, the violators are not going to do anything about it themselves. Unless there's a broad dialogue which brings into place serious political reforms which can then address the, 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 the hallmark and the origins of these human rights problems, it's going to continue. What parallels do you see between Robert Mugabe and the Munangagwa's policies? Look, I think that the issue is they come from the same politics. Um, you know, uh, Munangagwa came to power through a coup d'etat. Mugabe, Mugabe's power base was largely through the armed forces as well. Um, the politics of authoritarian rule has been with Zimbabwe for nearly two decades. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is a continuity of that. In fact, a resurgence of that in the, since the Munangagwa regime came to power. So they're very much part of the same political culture. There's no tolerance of opposition. There's a perception that uh, ZANU-PF has the right to rule forever and that no other party should contest. Elections are uh, cosmetic because even when parties win elections, as MDC and uh, Tsangirai did in 2008, they, they were denied the right to take power. So it's clear that the elections are, are not uh, looked at seriously by ZANU-PF and, and as well as Munangagwa. And so we have a real problem of trying to get into our political culture the idea that ruling parties can lose and step down from power.